Yeah, I, I never really took testosterone. It was always, you know, a Winstrel or an Anavar to help me get lean and retain size. Um, and then it wasn't until even after I got done competing that it was like, okay, my testosterone's super low. And it was because some of the side effects of those other things are to shut down your natural testosterone. Looking back on that time when, when you were using, how influential do you think the, the performance enhancing substances were in terms of your bodybuilding career? And on a follow-up question for that, would you go back and not do them if it didn't mean you had the career you had now? Um, I go back. I, 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 I think about this quite a bit. Like, again, so I played college football. We were tested. I did natural bodybuilding. We were tested, polygraph, and your analysis. Um, and then as I got into the competing world, it came, you know, into men's physique on that Olympia stage. It, it became very apparent um, early on that you're not going to be able to, to win t these top level shows. It's not an even level playing field because there's guys that are taking four or five compounds. And that's inevitably when I decided to quit competing because I felt like, you know, if I'm doing all of this stuff to, to, to be competitive, I then lose my identity as someone who preaches health. And, and that was a personal decision for me. It's not for everyone. Some how people, I think. That, sorry to jump in, Steve, but how difficult was that decision? Because you're almost looking at a fork in the road where you yeah. go down there and you decide to take whatever additional to what you were taking yeah. in the first place, knowing that your health is going to be compromised or completely getting off the track. That must have been a difficult decision for someone who spent a number of years trying to get to that stage. Definitely. I think definitely. And I think the hard thing is, is there's no like, there's really no gray area. Again, like if they were competing naturally and everything was an even playing field, um, you can, you know, it, it's an easier decision, but it, it's hard to be kind of like, oh, I'm going to be one foot in the door, one foot out. Like I, I'm going to, you know, you have to realize that you might not place as well because again, your, your, your size isn't this. And I think, uh, you know, it's almost like, because I'm the type of person I am with my competitiveness, I would have wanted to push the envelope. If I, if I decided, Hey, I'm going to jump into this. There's no, there's no, like, there's no doubt in my, my mind um, that I would have been able to compete at the highest level and maybe won some, some, some shows, but I would have had to be on those three, four, you know, sometimes even five compounds because you have, you know, you have your, your testosterone and then you have cutters and you have all of these different, these different substances in your body that again, like we celebrate people that do that because again, just like, you know, just like any other athlete, they're, they're using those tools to get to like, you know, I, I always love when, you know, some of these competitive bodybuilders, it, it is a combination of super duper hard work. Um, but it's also, it is a, you know, pharmacy race too. Like it, it is who, who is, you know, responding to what, and, and ultimately, I think that that's a decision every competitor is going to have to make. And again, I don't judge. There's no one I judge for, for doing things because I've been in those in, the, in that person's shoes where it's like, man, if I just took this, this and this, I could I could compete on, you know, on a, on a higher level. And, I, and again, it's it's just it's just one of those tough things. And I'm not going to even say, you know, hey, who's to say in three or four years I decided to jump on stage and, and compete and take a that's that's a decision that I'll make at the time. So I think it's it's just a personal decision that. Um, ultimately for me, it wasn't, it, it didn't, it didn't help me create, um, this person. It, it, it wasn't a part of my long-term term goals, which who I identify with, because again, at the end of the day, I couldn't be healthy. How hard did you push the envelope, Steve, if I can ask that? And, and, and how quickly did you notice a change in your physique? Cause obviously at, at college, you were drug free. You were playing yep. sports at high level. You, you're someone who strikes me as always having a great physique. What? How far did you push it in terms of substances, and, and how quickly did you see a change? Yeah, no, I. So it started off. I, you know, again, we did over the counter pro hormones like the McGuire days, like in baseball when everyone was on these pro hormones. Um, in Utah, these pharmacies or not pharmacies, these gyms and supplement stores. I think they had pro hormones that were, again, pretty nasty. The side effects were gynecomastia and things like that. Um, you know, then you have like the woman, the, the, the woman enhancing, you know, like the Winstrel and the Anavar. And I think that I, I, I probably, yeah, I, I never really took testosterone. It was always, 
you know, a Winstrel or an Anavar to help me get lean and retain size. Um, and then it wasn't until even after I got done competing that it was like, okay, my testosterone's super low. And it was because some of the side effects of those other things are to shut down your natural testosterone. But for me, it was like, I never like testosterone in my head was like, I'm going to get gigantic if I start taking that. So, um, you know, that really wasn't part of my competing um, regimen. And I think that it's kind of, I think the base of every, of every bodybuilders now is like, you know, testosterone is where you start. So I think that uh, my last show is, you know, like I, I competed in that and was on, you know, like a prescribed testosterone, very low dose of that. Um, but again, it's, it's, I, I think back, I often will think back, you know, just in those moments of like, man, what could I have done if I had taken four or five different substances? Would I, you know, would I have won a couple Olympias? What would have that done for my life? Would I be in any different spot? Would I be a better person for it? Would I feel like I, you know, you know, looking myself in the mirror, would I, you know, would I, would I feel any different? I don't know. So it, to me, it's, you know, I, I have, you know, daydreamed at times about like, okay, if, if I just went hard all in on that, um, you know, could you accomplish this end all be all Mr. Olympia type thing? But for me, I just think, you know, in, in, when I'm 60 years old with my, with my kiddos, will that, will that have mattered? I don't, I don't know. So you, you talk about it, not as though it was a regret, more as just an interesting thought experiment, because yeah. knowing what you said about your personality being all or nothing was part of the reason you held back, knowing that you didn't know how far down that road you would go. Right. Yeah, I am an, definitely that all or nothing. And I, so I think it's like, you know, I would have, I would have, if I decided to be in that world, in that industry, um, I would have, you know, pushed the envelope and, and tried. And, and unfortunately now I feel like I've, I've seen more deaths in the last two or three years, um, regarding you know bodybuilders some people are you know making covid vaccine like so many other people are are drawing conclusions i do feel like we've had an unusual number of young bodybuilders dying um and you know i'm not a doctor i can't say what has led to that um but it is it's kind of it's kind of been interesting to 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 see it happening and and again it's like we we really don't know you know, what the effects of taking all of these compounds at a young age is doing to people and even peptides, even SARMs, those types of things. So it is, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is if you're a young person, I always tell people that have asked me like, you know, the big like, Steve, I, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about taking steroids. It's like, that's such a personal decision. I'm not going to try to to tell you which way to go or, but I, I always will say, have you maxed out your potential naturally? If you have it, keep going with that. If you're a young person, keep going with that. Now, if you want, if you're, if you're, if your biggest aspiration in life is to be Mr. Olympia, know that sometime down that path, it's going to, it's going to be something you have to address. You're, you're going to have to either jump into it or you're going to say, Hey, I actually, I'm changing my goals. And I think that for some people are like, it, it is like, Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't really know that. Um, Again, the further you get into competing, the more and more, you, you know, like you, like me, you can recognize somebody who's, who's, you know, on, on things and, and not just testosterone, you know, there's, there's other substances that I think, you know, whether people's skin, they, they change their whole, it looks like their whole facial structure changes. I'm like, geez, whether it's HGH or, you know, just whatever. I think that the, the other issue as well is that as we're seeing social media, these social media fitness guys become superstars and portraying an unrealistic body image. It's not just people in the fitness industry that maybe are drawn to, the, to steroids and other performance enhancing or physique enhancing um, products now. And it's, it's one thing doing it when you are meticulously training, logging everything, having the blood work. It's another issue entirely when you're taking almost recreationally to get ripped for a holiday in Ibiza or doing it for, you know, just, just to look good walking around town, right? That's obviously got to be something we should all be concerned about, especially with young guys, just just almost recre recreationally using it to look good right. without second thought to their mental health or their long term health. And I think, unfortunately, probably, I, I think I read ninety percent of steroid users are just recreational. They're not, you know, just because the amount of people that compete isn't isn't really a, a big number. Um, so most steroid users are. And again, it's like, who am I to judge? 
you know, if, if we're if we're getting back to body image, you know, how much of it is is they want to look like X, Y, Z. I think it's being able to make sure it's always our the, the individual's responsibility to be as informed as possible what you're putting in your body. I don't care if it's you know you see some girls removing their their breast implants because they read up and realized like yo I, maybe I don't want to do that. Again, I'm I I have I'm no one to judge on you know whether it's breasts, lips, steroids, like it's, it's a personal decision. It's how you make them feel. I mean, we're seeing things in today's society. And again, this becomes a moral conversation real quick when you start talking about, okay, at what age, you know, even kids on, on hormones to, to change, um, you know, puberty and puberty blockers and things like that. So I, it's a whole nother route, but we in society, like there's, there's so many things that, this conversation ends up steering into different directions when we start talking about it morally. So just taking that out of it, I think it's people's individual's jobs to become as informed as as possible. And then from there, if, if you're going to do it, knowing the risk, that's, that's on you then. That's, that's something that I, again, it's a personal decision that I'm not going to judge anyone for that. Um, hopefully they've done their, their, their homework because a lot of these things, you know, there are, there are side effects. These are real deal um, there's a reason they're prescribed. And so the side effects, I think, you know, there's nothing worse than, than feeling like crap. If you don't, you know, come off of a testosterone, cold Turkey and, and, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to have, you know, sex drive and libido and things like that. So I think it's important for, for, for young people to realize the side effects when, you know, it's like, there's a reason plastic surgery, there's a consultation with a doctor. They, they let you know what to expect. And I think, you know, my only advice to, to young guys would be like, hey, if you're, if you're looking at this, have a consultation with a doctor. Let them talk to you about the, the side effects of, of low testosterone or too much testosterone, whether it's your heart, um, you know, whether it's, you know, so many things, acne, you know, impotence, all, all of these things. So, so know going into it and then decide. 